Guys, you're with Julian on the Browno and a quick ish review of the new Australian sci fi film 2067. Now, this is by Seth Lani, South African born, grew up in the outback in Australia and worked in a technical capacity on the Matrix films. And he's been uh, writing this film in the background since 2005. Uh, it came out in October 2nd, so really recent. And uh, another in the pantheon of low to small budget Australian sci-fis. Um, this one features a dystopian future. What would be revolutionary if there's someone to make a sci-fi where the future's really nice, <laughs> where everything's green? Um, here uh, we've killed off, in a very nice opening sequence, uh, we see the, the world collapsing and the lights going out globally as the effects of climate change ravage the planet Eventually, you see, like, the countries, their lights start to go out as um, oxygen starts to fade and all plant life is dead uh, and human beings can only exist on manufactured oxygen and they all work in these horrible environments where people are dying and uh, there's an illness going around where people get sick from this new manufactured oxygen. Cody Smith McPhee and Ryan Quentin work in one of these sort of nuclear projects where um, they're manufacturing all of this stuff and his wife is also suffering from this illness where she rejects the manufactured oxygen the scientists come towards him his dad used to be a big scientist and they come to him and said they've res they've been trying to contact the future 400 years in advance of 2067 and found out that the oxygen levels have returned in that year and they've received a message back saying send the character played by Cody Smith McPhee and they believe if they send him through the time portal thing they've invented where they got this message back he will be able to find the antidote to what uh, enables the earth to regenerate in the modern era saving everyone who's heading towards death um, and he goes he goes off into the future to try and save everyone in the present um, it's not the most original paradigm I've ever heard. Now, uh, this film is a huge problem, massive problems here. Over the last decade, we have seen um, low to small budget sci-fi and horror go through an industrial revolution where the most exciting vanguard of movies is in this arena um, and where we've seen films like Annihilation, and under the skin be at the top of the tree and hereditary and the witch and the horror side of things be at the top of the tree artistically you know these dynamic artistic statements that have brilliant cinematography and sound and great acting heady intellectual themes and are some of the best films being made and australia has punched way above its weight in the sci-fi field where very small budget films have been dazzling often artistically, The Rover, Predestination, um, I Am Mother, uh, which I haven't reviewed, but I'm going to because it's brilliant, um, and uh, Upgrade, another magnificent one that costs a few million, but looks like it costs about 60 million. Great films, great scripts, great screenplays, brilliant visuals, artistically at the, head, at the absolute apex of the curve, in that world, 2067, even on its bad writing and its trite, obvious subject matter would be a runt. Um, it's, I don't, I mean, sometimes these films come out like the Will Smith one came out last year and they've been developed for a long period of time and you wonder why? Because this idea of the planet failing and this dystopian future is so overdone. It's like, what's original here? I mean, the fact that it's about climate change or the fact that things, you know, send someone in the future where things get better. Broadly speaking, Tenet was operating in a similar sort of paradigm anyway. Um, and that wasn't interesting at all. Um, but that, that would sink this film anyway. But it gets sunk a lot worse by its terrible casting and awful acting. I'm no fan of Cody Smith McPhee. Uh, I thought in Slow West he was perfectly cast. He is like the ultimate crying teenager man baby. Uh, he was brilliant in that film because his whiny teenage personage was was perfect for that role. And he was opposite um, 
the guy from the X-Men movies who I can't remember, but a brilliant actor, and and that, and he was a much more masculine adult character. And the, the Cody Smith McPhee was chasing after his teenage love affair, who was a real woman and far out of his league. And and his death scene at the end of that is one of my all-time favourites. He was a grating, annoying character. And it was perfect for the role because that's what was needed. This time around, they don't. They need someone completely different. And they get this really grated, whining teenager uh, who's always on the verge of tears. Um, everyone in this film cries all the time at the drop of a hat and has these massive meltdowns. Um, and Brian Quentin, who's the the masculine adult version is a very very bland character as well um he's the the acting between the two is is completely all over the shop very uneven and they don't i mean it, i've seen some of you say that this is a director's fault well i don't know if cody smith mcphee would be better to, than any than this character because that's kind of what i expect from him but he's terrible here and he's very miscast and ryan's character is very 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 bland and Deborah Mailman, who made a name for herself as an ebullient musical star of, an indig- of indigenous heritage, is unbelievably miscast as this chief science evil genius guy. Uh, she is terrible. Um, and what they were thinking, casting her in that role, which doesn't suit her in any way. Um, this film is a very, very big misfire because it's a misfire in a huge number of ways. The um, original paradigm of the film is very very old hat as far as dystopian future movies goes um the writing is very bad and uh it takes a long time to get where it's going some of the cinematography is nice and i've seen that promoted as a great thing about the movie but so are a lot of films on that budget upgrade looks amazing um it doesn't look that amazing it looks very very nice the one absolute standout thing is the music by Christian Axel Holm and Kenneth Lample is magnificent and deserving of a much better film but in a in a world where films like Annihilation exist or where Australian films like Upgrade exist or I Am Mother exists this is really bad and I found myself cringing a hell of a lot I found the characters grating, the writing terrible, the performance is bad, and the casting awful. So a short one, but I'm going to say it's one of the biggest misfires of the year for 2067. Uh, And I didn't see a lot to say that Cephalani is one to watch out for in the future. So uh, 2067, nearly apart from some cinematography and a brilliant soundtrack uh, or score, Everything else in this film is bad. So 2067, I'm going to give a paltry 2 out of 10.